Hi, these comments are for BK. I am Michael from BetterTofelScores.com and today I'm giving you feedback on a independent writing and independent speaking practice test. This is my free TOEFL speaking and writing evaluation service. You can use this one time which means I'll give you feedback on one writing practice test and then one speaking practice test. You can find uh, some of your weak points and you can get some ideas on what you can do to improve in both of those areas. So the, the first area is, let's take a look at your writing. Okay, so I, I do have some concerns on this. So you have about 312 words overall. Uh, I recommend that you... <laughs> you develop this to about 450, even 500 words, so you can score higher. But let's take a look at what artificial intelligence, uh, uh, Microsoft Word's grammar check program thinks about your uh, writing. So I had Microsoft look at your sentences per word, right? So we can see that you have uh, uh, words per sentence is 15.6. Your characters per word is 4.7. Your grade level is a uh, 9.8, which is very low. And your passive sentences are 35%. So for independent writing, you're using too much passive voice here. So you want to make sure that you're not using that much passive voice in this because you want to try to explain things from your point of view. So you're kind of the doer uh, of what's going on. So active voice is going to work better there. So to help you in these areas, so words per sentence, instead of an average of 15, you want to have about 25 words should be the average sentence length for this type of writing. This is college academic writing. Now, the characters per word, you want to go closer to 5.0, not 4.7. So I think if you improve your sentence length and you use some more uh, longer uh, words in there, you'll definitely increase the grade level of your writing and therefore you'll do better when ETS's artificial intelligence takes a look at your writing along with a, a TOEFL IBT human writer. Okay, so that's the main thing that I think is going to cause you some trouble uh, with your writing. Now, the other thing is this first paragraph is 47 words. I recommend that you use around 100 words for that introduction. You have a feel this way for two logic. You can't use logic as a noun there. I mean, you can use it as the logic. It is possible to use as a noun, but I wouldn't use it like that. I would say I feel this way for two logical reasons, but I would not even use that thesis. You need a thesis that restates the purpose of these two body paragraphs. So you need a more sharply focused thesis. And then in this case, maybe what you can do here is develop each of these paragraphs to 150 words and then add a third reason on to your ideas also. I think that would also help you. And sometimes it's it's word choice like this for two logic, for two logical reasons. So sometimes the words that you use maybe are not that natural. So you have some problems with what the TOEFL calls the idiomasticity of language use. So I'm thinking maybe in the three area here, th this would be where I would score you right now. So addresses a topic, I think, using somewhat developed explanations, exemplifications, and or details. You could develop ideas a little bit more. Uh, I think may demonstrate inconsistent facility and sentence formation and word choice that may result in, I think this is a bit of a problem, what's called lack of clarity with the ideas that you're explaining sometimes. And I think you have an accurate but limited range of synt syntactic structures and vocabulary. That means to show more variety, you're using longer sentences as opposed to shorter. So using a lot of 10 to 15 word sentences shows that you're limited 
in the range of sentence styles that you can use. You're not sure about how to combine sentences using either noun clause, adjective clause, or adverb clause connectors. Okay, so those are my comments on that. Uh, I'm going to put your writing at about 20. 20 out of 30 points I think is probably pretty accurate for right now. Okay, now the next thing is I'm going to listen to a speaking practice test that you also sent me so I can get an idea of uh, what your speaking level is. So now you know what your writing level is and you know some things that you can do to get better in that area. Let's listen to your it's speaking. It's a great idea that people use sophisticated surgical procedures such as cosmetic surgery to change their physical appearance. I say this for one major reason. Okay, notice how I say this for one major reason. Instead of saying I say this for one major reason, you can actually state what the reason is there. You might say to help people feel better about their self-esteem, I do think cosmetic surgery is beneficial to patients, something like that. And then you give that specific example, right, to support your ideas there. And I'm, I'm very concerned about your tone. I mean, listen to that intonation again one more time. Listen to how I'm speaking right now and then compare it to how you're speaking. It's a great idea, Zaz. In the beginning, the tone wasn't bad, though the word great is a very weak word. It's not very strong. Will you sophisticated surgical procedures such as cosmetic surgery to Such as cosmetic surgery. Change your physical appearance. I say this for one major reason. To change your physical appearance. I say this for one uh, reason. Notice how I, right after that first sentence, you don't even have a pause there. And then you go directly into the next sentence. That's called a run-on sentence there. You need to have pauses right after each of your independent clauses, right? You want to have a pause after the sentence. Then you begin your next idea. And then when you're explaining the ideas within your sentences, you need to break them into thought groups. And after each thought group, you'll have a pause along with a slightly higher inflection. Then you have another thought group of, say, four to five stress words along with another pause. When you get to the end of the sentence, you will have a, a drop in your tone. And it's that varied intonation that makes you speak naturally. And it makes it easier to concentrate on your ideas. Having ceased surgery will help them to become more healthy. For example, if a person hates his physical appearance, he will start to uh, isolate himself from the rest of the community. He will start to isolate himself. So you need to make the connection. How does plastic surgery improve one's health? Maybe mental health, for sure, even physical health. As a result of compensation, he will start to eat a lot of sweet and junk foods, and he will end up in gaining weight. This gaining weight will increase his blood cholesterol, and finally he will end up in... Okay, this is good. So I see the cause-effect relationship. So not taking care of one's body ends up resulting in eating a lot of fatty and sugary foods, which can lower, which can increase one's cholesterol. In development of other systemic illness such as hypertension and diabetic. In addition, uh, being isolated from the community will result in the development of a major mental disorder. For these reasons, reason I will say that people. Uh, should, should have to have sophisticated surgical procedure to change their physical appearance. Okay, what if you said in the beginning, you might want to say to improve one's mental and physical health, people should get cosmetic surgery. Say, first of all, cosmetic surgery can improve one's mental health. Then you can talk about maybe the effect between depression and uh, not having cosmetic surgery or something. See, in addition, it will also help to improve a person's physical health, and then you can do that one. So that might give you a little bit better connection of ideas. So in the beginning, you need a little bit better topic statement. I think in both your writing and your speaking, you don't understand the concept of a thesis statement. That's something that you need to work on. Because if you have a good thesis in the introduction, it makes it easier to connect the rest of either your writing or your speaking response. That's definitely an area that you can work on. Okay, so let's go over here. I'm looking at the speaking rubrics here. 
this is kind of interesting. It's trying to figure out how to give you a score here. Give me a quick second here. Okay, I think I think your delivery is more in the two area. So you have awkward uh, intonation, yes. Not really a choppy rhythm or pace, but it's just there's just no pausing going on in your sentences. So it's not really choppy, but it's not making enough pauses in there, not varying your tone enough to uh, explain your ideas. So you definitely have very awkward intonation in this. I think with the language use, you're more in the three area. I'm going to say you're maybe somewhat limited in the range of structures used in both vocabulary and grammar. So I see a lot of the limitations that I, I, I mentioned in the writing practice test I looked at. I'm seeing the same kinds of problems in your speaking practice test. So I think if you solve one problem, you're going to solve another, which means if you improve your sentence length and your syntactic variety and you, you increase your vocabulary level, I think that's going to help you for both your speaking and your writing. Those are two areas I think you can work on. Topic development, I think that you actually had some, some well-developed ideas in there, maybe not quite at the four area. You could probably elaborate a little bit more, be a little bit more specific in some of your ideas. So I think you have a couple of areas. Language use topic development is in the three area, and then your delivery is definitely in the two area. So how, what is your score here? Uh, I'm gonna put you about the same as writing. I'm gonna say maybe 20 to 21 points out of 30 on this particular practice test for some of the reasons I just explained. All right? And that, that's kind of what I'm thinking there. So what do you do now? Uh, I think if you're interested in this, I have some solutions to help you. It's not going to be cheap. I'm not going to lie to you. It costs money uh, to use a tutor. I got over 35 years of experience. And I think there's, there's a couple of things we can do here to help you. Number one is an inexpensive option where you can enroll in my TOEFL speaking and writing feedback service. You can learn more about it by going to bettertoefelscores.com. It's only like $45 a month. So you can send me speaking and writing practice on a day-to-day -day basis. I will continue to give you feedback. However, that type of feedback does not include error correction or really, really extensive accent reduction practice, both uh, areas that you really, really need right now. So here's my suggestion. Enroll in that speaking and writing feedback course, and then you can supplement that with two private lessons per week. The first lesson, I will help you with accent reduction. So I'm going to have you go through my, my, my uh, pronunciation pretest for vowel and consonant sounds first. And then once you do that, uh, I will recommend specific lessons that we can work on, and then we can show up together kind of like this in a Zoom meeting, and I will go over those lessons one by one to help you improve your delivery. Now, the second lesson weekly is I recommend that you do writing practice, is you, you complete an independent or integrated writing practice test, you bring it to the meeting, and then we go over your essay together. And I can do some correction. I can give you some really, really good corrective feedback. I can also help you with the organization and the development of your ideas. So I think one, maybe two private lessons per week, the first one with accent reduction, the second one with uh, writing uh, correction. I think it may be in about a month or so, uh, we can make a lot of improvements, right? It takes time. But I definitely can help you make those improvements that you need to make. Uh, if you're a doctor, I work with a lot of doctors. I'm working with a doctor from Chile right now. I'm working with a doctor from Ecuador. Uh, and I am very familiar with helping uh, the medical professionals uh, get that really high level of both speaking and writing proficiency so that you can reach that score. All right. So if you're, if you're interested in the private lessons... Uh, 
Send me a quick email. We can arrange for a Zoom meeting and you can think of any questions that you might have and we can have a Zoom meeting and we can talk more about it. I can answer any questions you might have. Um, all right. And thank you for completing the speaking and writing practice. I hope that you have some ideas now on what you can do to improve both your speaking and writing.